So hello everybody, it's the end of the year and it's time to sum up some Bitwig tips and tricks I collected over the year for you. So let's dive in. First tips, key commands. It's always helpful to learn your key commands on the keyboard to navigate much faster in each and every drawing, also each and every software. But also in Bitwig, it makes total sense. And some combinations I also always forget about are the following. So first button combination is for playback, but we need some content here in the arranger area to make it work. So let's, for example, put here the play start at that position press the space bar and press it again it starts and stops playback i guess everybody knows about that but you can also combine it with the alt key and then it will start from the beginning of the arranger which is also pretty helpful and you don't need to search the beginning of the project just press alt and space bar and it will play from the beginning of the arranger Next one is setting the loop. So I regularly have the issue, for example, I have a quite large loop and have also zoomed in to edit something and then I want to focus, let's say, here on the second bar. So how can I do that? Because the handles are outside of the view here in the Ranger, but there is a button combination for that. If you press the control key, you see it turns into the right selection for the loop and if you combine it with the Alt key, so Control and the Alt key, you see it changes to the beginning of the loop. So you could now click here to set the beginning and now only the Control key, I can set the end of the loop and play back only that. Next one is tapping tempo is a bit hidden, but there are actually three different ways to do that. So first one is again with the keyboard. You can press again, as we just did with the loop, the control and the alt key and press the space bar at the speed you want to have it pretty fast or let's slow down. So this works with the keyboard only, but you can also use the mouse. If you simply click the play button with the right mouse button in the tempo you wish to have, it also changes the tempo. But you can also use the left mouse button if you press control key. So control and playback sets also the speed by clicking the play button. So next one, someone will ask in the forums how the coders are configured. And there's actually a bit of a different handling if you use a VST vocoder or if you use the Bitwig vocoder. And here I have a simple polysynth chord. Maybe let's get rid of that so it looks a bit easier to understand. So we have only the playback here of those scenes and I'm, I'm only playing back here the polysynth with two simple chords and uh, just the default sound of polysyn. So if we then pull in here the vocoder, let's enable it, you see we have a modulator and we have a carrier and these are the two components of a vocoder. So carrier is more for the sound, how it sounds, the output and modulator changes the pronunciation uh, and the timing and these things. We can easily hear that if we apply a drum loop and you could use it in two ways. So you could insert an instrument or your saw sound into the modulator and you can insert here your carrier. So there's different ways to do that. You can also put in front, but I guess it's simpler to hear that. I have here two sounds to use the vocoder. So first one is the drum loop. So simple drum machine here, playing a basic groove. And the next one is a vocal sample from the Bitwig library. Yeah. Sindhu Kaveri. And you could now insert these two into the modulator. And to do so, you need to add an audio receiver here into the modulator. So if you click on a modulator, this section opens and here you select your audio source. And here I selected the vocals track and let's hear that with the vocoder now. And for sure you can change all the things and make it sound as you want to have it. 
And the sound is coming here from the polysynth. I could alternatively put it into the carrier, which works as well. So you could do it like this as well. Sounds exactly the same. Or I could use something else. I could use noise, which is here also in the carrier. And then you can also disable the polysynth. It's not used. Okay, but let's also hear how the drums work. So let's change the modulator from the vocals to the drums. So here we have the drums. So it's pretty helpful to make some chomping pads. So it's pretty straightforward to do that with a Bitwig vocoder, but let's have a look at how to do that with a VST plugin. So I loaded here a microcork, which has a vocoder here, vocoder setting, and I selected a vocoder setting. And to make that work, you need to put the audio receiver in front of the VST plugin. So MIDI is still coming the same way via the clip into this track, but we need to put here the audio receiver and here you either select the vocals or we select the drums as we did before. Let's just hear the drums. Sounds very interesting. And then you can also tweak here the vocoder. Or hear it with the vocals. Now a tip about controllers, which I just only learned recently, because I always wondered what is the sense of pinning only device and not pinning the track. And actually it makes a lot of sense. And I get this question also regularly, how can you use a specific device for each track. By now you can also collect them into the track parameters, but if you want to say, for example, here on that track, I'd like to focus on the microcork, and on that track, I like to focus on the polysynt or on the vocoder, whichever you want here to change, but you want to focus on a full instrument. And you can do that by pinning it, but pinning it differently for each track. So let's pin here the polysynth on the polysynth track. Let's open that and you can say here pin and I will pin this device for that track. Let's go now to the microcork track and let's say on a microcork track I'd like to pin the microcork but I don't have any mappings in there so let's create something so you can see that. Let's just say we want the filter level and now let's open that up and it's still empty. Why is it still empty? Oh, now it's here. Okay, it's not updated correctly. So let's pin here the microcork. And now if we switch back to the polysynth track, let's see. We have the polysynth and let's switch back to the microcork. We have the microcork. So this is pretty helpful, for example, if you create a live set and want to focus on different devices on different tracks. However, it might make more sense to use now track parameters or use uh, project parameters to have everything in one place. But it sometimes makes sense to go the other way. So next one, it's about the browser and the browser as it shows up is normally not that helpfully configured and I changed it quite a bit. And the nice thing about it is you can store it for different applications. So if, uh, if you need to insert, for example, FX devices or instruments, you can save these different configurations. And you do that by right-clicking here and say browser settings and say use current selections for this context. And then it saves that configuration. 
what I did is I changed the width of the columns, which might not be that obvious. And I think in default, it's something like this. So there's lots of empty space here in the middle, which makes no sense at all because it's only a short list of names. So it makes totally sense to have it like this. So you can nicely also see the different filter options, especially if you go to tags, you see more tags here and to have them like this. And for inserting instruments, I also have enabled uh, that it shows only the favorites or you can enable it in general. And then you directly see the instruments you use most of the time or you want to see and can insert them straight away. So last but not least, how do you use external effects? For that, there is a nice device which is called hardware effect and I had configured them as sand effects, but it turns out it's a bit tricky to record the output of that. If you not only want to record the master because you only have one external effect and you might want to apply them with different settings on different tracks or different clips, so it makes more sense to have them individual as an insert effect. So I switched now completely to using them as insert effects and to make that easier, I have here a deactivated track where I have my four external hardware effects. They are active, but the track is deactivated. So if I pull them out, they're directly active. Let's do that. For example, let's pull out the Yamaha SPX990 and let's put it on. Let's maybe drag in here a loop so we can hear that. Let's put the loop here and maybe just to make this more clear, let's just remove everything. And where is the loop? No loop. Here's the loop. So a bit of percussion from the bit. Oh, it created a sampler. Okay, I see. So we want it like that. So now let's pull out the SPX effect onto that track. And we will hear it, I guess. And the nice thing about that is you can uh, use them as a send effect by adjusting here the mix level. So the advantage of that using it as an insert effect is that you directly can bounce it by using here post fader or costume settings after the hardware effect and then you can bounce it to a new clip with that effect. And then you have freed it up to use it in a different place for example. But I had another issue because this one can receive MIDI so I can send program changes to it to select different effects. And there is no nice way I found to do that. If you have a better idea than mine, please tell me down in the comments. Yeah, the issue is that in contrast to the hardware instrument we have, so the hardware instrument has a MIDI out for sending uh, the MIDI notes to it, but the hardware effects doesn't have a MIDI out, which would be very, very useful to send program changes to it. Yeah, Bitwig, if you're watching my video, please add an output to that. And it's pretty tricky to do that. And the solution I found is to have on the effect track, I put a program change and set the output of that track, which is an audio track. But interestingly, you can also send it to a MIDI track, which is surprising, but it's possible. So I send it to the SPX990 MIDI output and now I can change here the program from that track. So now I can send program changes to it. And to have a clue what is where, I copied simply all the preset names with their number into this command field of the audio tracks. <laughs> so I can simply look up what is in there. For example, delays start here at 34. And there's some funny pitch effects as well. Let's say 44 or something. And there's even some cool ones. Where is that? 
Autumn Wacker is nice. 5 1, 51. Okay, so much for that. I hope that was helpful to you, and until next time, make some fucking music. <laughs>